This example will show how to use a DMA to stream data from PS memory to the programmable logic. I'll allocate buffers in the PS memory for the DMA to access. The hardware design I'll use has an AXI DMA from the Vivado IP catalog. This DMA is supported by Pink. The DMA has two master ports and if we trace those, they go all the way back to the Zinc AXI high performance ports. DMA has two AXI stream ports for sending data to and receiving data from an IP that has corresponding AXI stream ports. A HLS IP with AXI masters could be connected to the Zinc HP ports instead of the DMA. The principle I'm showing here would be the same. Memory is allocated and we would pass the address of the memory to the HLS IP. In this example, I'm connecting an AXI FIFO as a loopback between the DMA AXI stream ports. The connections are indicated in red and blue. The blue channel that we see is the send channel where data from PSD RAM is streamed to the IP through the DMA. And the red channel is the receive channel where data is streamed from the IP through the DMA back to the PSD RAM. This design allows me to test the DMA by sending some data through one channel and receiving the same data back through another channel. I'll download the overlay and check the help. And I can see the AXI DMA has been assigned the pink AXI DMA class. I'll allocate a memory buffer as I did in the previous example. The memory buffer is 1,032 bit unsigned ints or about four megabytes. I'll initialize the memory with some data. And as a quick check, I'll print the first few values of the memory buffer. So you can see that the contents have been initialized. I can now send this data to the PL by doing a DMA transfer. So on the send channel, I'm using the transfer function. Note that I pass the memory buffer itself, which will automatically include the physical address, so I don't need to pass this manually. Next, I'll read back data using the DMA. I could use the same memory buffer that I used for the initial transfer, but instead I'll create a separate output buffer to read back the result. Again, I'll do a quick check to show the contents of this buffer before the transfer, and it's all zeros as I didn't initialize it this time. I can then do the transfer on the receive channel this time, and I'm passing the output buffer to that transfer function. I'll print the first few results to check that everything looks okay, and then I'll do a more complete comparison to check that the, the data I received is actually the data I sent. This really concludes this example, but I'd like to show the register map for this IP that we looked at in the previous example. You can see we can access the register information for the DMA. You can see various control and status registers. DMAs can be difficult to debug, particularly for beginners. The pink API will try to throw sensible errors. I'll trigger an error now by trying to do a second transfer on the receive channel while the first transfer is still pending. And you can see that the this function will report that the DMA channel is not idle. I can also see this now in the register map. You can see the source address and the destination address. I could verify these match the addresses for the input and output buffers. We can also view the hex value for the address. And just to show the output address, and you can see this matches the destination address. I can see the transfer length along with other status bits and registers that the DMA provides. This concludes this section. This example showed how a memory buffer can be used to allow PLIP to access PS memory. A DMA was used to transfer data using a FIFO and loopback configuration. The FIFO would be replaced with an accelerator in a real design. A HLS IP with AXI masters could be used instead of the DMA and the physical address of the memory would be passed to the HLS IP.